Today we're going to go ahead and continue with our Activity 1.7, our Game Time app. Our main objective for today is to focus on the behaviors of our white blood cell sprite as well as the germ sprite. In our previous activity, we went ahead and coded our start and reset button and got them working correctly. So now that we have them functioning, we can go ahead and get our sprites to move about the screen. Now the white blood cell sprite should basically move left to right along the bottom of the screen. And it's going to move based off of the player's fingertip. So as they slide their fingertip to the left of the screen, that sprite should follow and the same when they move it to the right. Now, in order to code out our white blood cell sprite, we're gonna be using an event handler called dragged. That is gonna use our current and previous values in order to get that sprite to move in the correct behavior. So let's go ahead and open up our MIT App Inventor and open up our code that we've already saved. And from here, let's go ahead and code out our white blood cell sprites behavior. Once you have your game time app opened up in MIT App Inventor, the next thing we need to do is to go over to our block view. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and begin coding that white blood cell sprite. So in order to do this, we need to find that when white blood cell sprite is dragged. So if we go on that left-hand side under our blocks, we need to find the white blood cell sprite. And from here, we're gonna find that event handler that says when white blood cell sprite is dragged. We're going to go ahead and bring that event handler in. And from here, we need to add just a few more lines of code to get this working correctly. So basically, we need to ask ourselves, what do we want to have happen when that sprite is being moved? And what we want it to do is basically move about the screen. So if we go back into that white blood cell sprite, we should be able to find one of these purple blocks that tells that sprite to move. And in this case, when we look at it, we have this move to X and Y coordinates. And this is what we're gonna need this to do is move along that X axis. So now that we have that white blood cell sprite moving, we now need to tell it where to move along the X and Y axis. In order to get this to move with our fingertip left to right, we need to get whatever the current X value is at the time, meaning wherever your fingertip is being placed on the screen. So in order to do this, we're gonna use the get current X, and that's a local variable that's only used within this event handler. So we're gonna go ahead and hover over that current X, and then we can grab the get current X and drop that in. Now that we have that in, we need to go ahead and program the Y part of this. Now for our Y coordinates, we don't want this to change. We want it to stay wherever we previously set the Y coordinates. So we're gonna go back into that white blood cell sprite and we're gonna scroll down and find one of these light green blocks that has the Y coordinate. So notice that we're not setting this to anything. We're just going to use what is already there. So if we drag in that white blood cell sprite to the Y, we should now be able to get that sprite to move left and right across the screen with our fingertips. The next step is to go and connect the companion app and test to see how this actually functions. Now, once your app is loaded into MIT App Inventor, we can go ahead and test the companion. And what we should be able to do is to take our white blood cell sprite and drag him from left to right on the screen. Notice if I try to go up, he's not gonna move up or down. Only using our fingertip will allow him to go left to right. And that's gonna allow him to defend the bottom of the screen. Now that we have our white blood cell sprites behavior programmed, let's go ahead and take a look at how to get the germ sprite to move as well. Now that we're ready to go ahead and program our germ sprites behavior, it's important to note that we already have our germ sprite moving and we did that in our start event handler. We basically went ahead and programmed that to move whenever the start button was selected by selecting a random number. We are looking more at getting that germ sprite to interact with the canvas on our screen. So what's going to happen when that sprite actually collides with or reaches one of the edges of the canvas? So that's going to be our main focus for this next part. So let's look at that germ sprite's behavior as it does collide with those edges. A couple things to note, if the germ sprite does hit the top right or left edge of the screen, it should bounce off of that edge. However, if the germ sprite hits the bottom edge, then the game should end and it's gonna show us this game over message, which we will program at a later time. Before we get into coding that behavior, 
Let's take a closer look at the canvas's edges. App Inventor assigns numeric values to the edges of the canvas. So our top edge has a value of one, our right edge has a value of three, our bottom edge has the value of negative one, and the left edge has a value of negative three. It's important to understand those values as we program the behavior. So if we take a look at the event handler that we're gonna be using for our germ sprite, we're not gonna be using the drag like we did for the white blood cell sprite. We're gonna be using when the edge is reached. So when that edge is reached, we want certain behaviors to occur. So let's jump back over to MIT App Inventor and let's begin programming the behavior of that germ sprite. Once you're back in MIT App Inventor, our next step is to go ahead and program that germ sprite behavior. So we're gonna be using an event handler here that is going to call when the edge is reached. So if we go into our germ sprite, we're gonna go ahead and click on that and what we're gonna look for is when this germ sprite edge is reached. So we're gonna bring out that event handler and from there we're gonna go ahead and create a condition. And our condition is gonna be an if then else statement. So basically if the bottom edge of the screen is reached, we're gonna end the game if any of the other three edges are reached, we're gonna call that sprite to just bounce off of it. Notice that this event handler has a variable, a local variable that we're gonna be using within this if then else program. So go up to your control structures in your blocks and we're gonna find that if then else and drag it in. From here, we can go ahead and set our condition. And our condition is basically going to be if the bottom edge is reached. Now, before we talked about the edges of the screen, and if we remember the bottom edge of our screen is equivalent to negative one. So that's something that's important to note with this condition. We're gonna go ahead and grab a math block here, and we're gonna drag in that comparison block, which is our equal sign. And what we want to compare here is if the edge is equal to negative one, which basically means if the bottom edge of the screen is reached. We can do that by hovering over the edge and grabbing that get edge. We're going to go ahead and click that and drag it into the front end of the block. And then from my math drawer, I'm going to go up and grab that number zero. And we're going to change that from a zero to a negative one. So at this point, we are now identifying which edge is going to meet the condition, which is going to be our bottom edge. If our bottom edge is reached, we want to make sure that our germ sprite stops moving. So we can go ahead and grab that germ sprite speed. Now remember, we've already done that before. So we have our germ sprite speed set to zero already in our reset button. We can right click and duplicate that code, or we can go ahead and find that germ sprite again and find the actual block and just go ahead and complete that again. So whatever is easier for you, but what we need to make sure is that we go ahead and take the germ sprite speed and go back up to that math drawer and grab that number zero. And we want to make sure that if it does indeed hit the bottom edge, we want that germ sprite to stop moving. So that's the first part of our condition. The second part of the condition is to call this picture to appear, which is our game over PNG file. Now in our designer view, you're going to notice that we already have some preloaded media. And one of them is that game over PNG. Notice how it's spelled with a capital G, capital O, and then the dot PNG. It's important to note for this next step that it's spelled identical or it will not work when it collides with that bottom screen. What we're gonna go ahead and do here is we're gonna go to that canvas and in that canvas, we're gonna go ahead and set the canvas's background image to match that media file. So go and find set canvas background image two. And from here, we're going to go ahead and grab just a normal text block. And we're going to go ahead and type that in exactly the way it was in that media drawer. So we're going to go ahead and type in game over dot PNG. So now our condition is set. If the bottom edge is reached, we're going to stop the germ sprite from moving and we're going to change that background to game over. The else part of this is basically meaning if it hits the left, right or top edge, it should just bounce off of the screen. In order to do that, we're gonna go back into our germ sprite and in one of the purple blocks, what we're gonna find is this bounce edge. So we want that germ sprite to bounce when an edge is reached. So we're gonna go ahead and drag that guy in and then we're gonna grab our variable again and we're gonna get whatever edge it actually collides with. 
So remember the way that conditions work is it's always going to check my if statement first. So when it collides with an edge, it's gonna check to see if the bottom edge was reached. If it wasn't, it's then gonna go ahead and run the else statement, which is going to get that germ sprite to simply bounce. Now that we have our germ sprite programmed, let's go ahead and open up our app companion and test to see how this actually works. Now, once you have your app companion opened up, we've now gone ahead and programmed the white blood cell sprite to move along the bottom of the screen, which we should be able to use our fingertip or if you're using the companion app, you can use your mouse. The next step is to test the actual behavior of that germ sprite. So before when we clicked start, it kind of got hung up in the corner. Here we're gonna see if it actually bounces around the screen. Now we don't have anything programmed yet if the germ sprite collides with the white blood cell sprite. So we still can't fully use the game the way it's intended until we write that bit of code. But what we should see and what we're looking for is if that sprite hits any of the top edges, right or left edges, it should simply bounce off of it. Once it hits the bottom of the screen, we should see that game over PNG appear on the actual screen. So let's give it a test and see what happens once we go ahead and hit that start button. So now you can see that once it did reach that bottom edge, we did get that game over. It did hit the top edge and bounced off of it. It hit the right edge and bounced off of it. So right now it looks like we have our start button working. We have our reset button working. There's still some minor behaviors that we have to change. As you can see, when we hit the reset button, we got to get rid of that game over PNG. We got to do some work with the white blood cell sprite. But overall, you now have your sprites behavior programmed.